In a previous lesson, we went through the five solubility mnemonics that will make our lives a lot easier in solution chemistry. And here they are. Sol, Chuck, Kualke, nose exceptions? Nah. The acetate ion, the alkali metal ions, the nitrate ion, and the ammonium ion. Any compound that has any of those ions is soluble. Sol, Brickell, Double Hugged, Agatha, and Paul Bunyan too. The bromide, iodide, and chloride ions form soluble compounds with other cations, except when they double hug, and when you double hug, you bond with Agatha and Paul Bunyan too. The third one, Sol, Solfate, two huge bars, and peanut butter too. In other words, sulfate compounds are soluble, unless the sulfate is matched up with the mercury-1 ion, the barium ion, strontium ion, or the lead-2 ion. We now go to ions that tend to form insoluble compounds, phosphate, chromate, and carbonate. The po crow was co. He huddled with everyone. That is, he got together with everyone. He bonded with everyone. But Al K said nah. In other words, these three ions tend to form insoluble compounds, that is, they bond with all cations, except with the alkali metal cations and the ammonium ion. And the last one, so you two are always combined with other cations. Well, not when we're strongly basic. In other words, with the ammonium ion and the strong base cations, which we went over in the previous lesson, it's lithium through cesium in the alkali metals and calcium through barium in the alkaline earths. And if you have a good imagination, you can see that this is a lowercase b standing for base. In other words, the sulfide ion and the hydroxide ion with pretty much all cations form insoluble compounds in aqueous solution, unless those cations are the ammonium ion or any of the strong base cations. Here the solubility guidelines are in more formal form. And let's tackle what's at the bottom of the page. Are the following compounds soluble or insoluble in water? So here are a bunch of compounds, and our job is to decide if they're soluble or insoluble. There's the formula for strontium chloride. I assume that you're familiar with chemical nomenclature at this point, so I'm not going to go into how we go from the name to the formula for each of the. I'm just going to go ahead and take the time to write out the formula for each of those, because the purpose here is to simply use the solubility mnemonics. So let's take number one, SRCl2, Sol Brickell, double hugged Agatha, because we have the chloride ion, and Paul Bunyan too. In other words, chloride ion compounds are soluble unless we have double hug, that is Hg2 2 plus, or Agatha, that is the silver ion Hg plus, or Pb2 plus, which means that this substance is soluble. And I'm going to symbolize that by Aq. How about silver chloride? We're going to use the same mnemonic. Sol Brickell, double hugged Agatha, look at that, there's Brickell double hugging Agatha, which means he's bonding with Agatha. That's insoluble. How about the third one? The Po Crow was Co. He huddled with everyone, but Al K said nah. There we have the phosphate ion. That's the Po in poor. He huddles with everyone, but not alkali metal ions, which is what lithium is. That is soluble. How about the next one? It also involves the phosphate ion. The po crow was cold. He huddled with everyone, but Al K said, nah. Gold, gold 3, which is what this ion is, is not an alkali metal ion, and it's not the ammonium ion, so that compound we would predict is insoluble. How about number 5? Sol Chuck Kualke, no exceptions. No exceptions, soluble every time. How about number six? Sol sulfate, two huge bars, and peanut butter, too. There's the sulfate ion. 
it's going to tend to form soluble compounds unless it ate two huge bars, Hg2, 2 plus, barium ion, strontium ion, or peanut butter, lead 2. So that's aqueous. There's another sulfate compound. Sol sulf eight, eight, got together with, bonded with, two huge bars and, uh-oh, peanut butter too, insoluble. How about these? Sol chuck kualke, no exceptions? Nah, no exceptions. Ammonium ion, always soluble. So, that involves the sulfide ion. So, you two are always combined. Not when we're strongly basic, insoluble. In other words, the sulfide ion forms insoluble compounds with everything except the ammonium ion and the strong base cations. So, you two are always combined, not when we're strongly basic. Barium is a strong base cation. Soluble. Sol, chuck, ku, alke, 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 alkali metal ion, no exceptions, aqueous. So, you two are always combined, insoluble. The po crow was coal. He huddled with everyone. Huddled with everyone. That is, was insoluble with everyone. But Al K, the alkali metals, and the ammonium ion, nah, insoluble. Same thing with calcium carbonate. It takes a little work to memorize these mnemonics, but I guarantee you will be glad you did. It's going to make your life a lot easier. Let's try one example where we use the solubility mnemonics. Precipitation reactions are reactions in solution that form an insoluble product. That product, of course, is called a precipitate. Suppose you mix solutions of lead 2 nitrate and sodium iodide. There are the formulas for those compounds. You can see that both of those are soluble. Anything with a nitrate ion is soluble, and anything with an alkali metal ion is soluble. They're both clear solutions looking maybe something like that. The ions that are present are, of course, the lead 2 ion, the nitrate ion, the sodium ion, and the iodide ion. If we write the overall ionic equation, that means that we have to put all of the ions in. Notice that I've put a coefficient of 2 in front of the nitrate ion because in the original compound the ratio of leads to nitrates was 1 to 2. So I've gone ahead and put a 2 in there. Then what we're going to do is we're going to switch the partners around and see what happens. In other words, the lead 2 cation, which was matched up with the nitrate, now we're going to see if we can match it up with the negative iodide ion here, and then we're going to take the sodium ion and match it up with the nitrate. And if we do that, we will notice that one of our mnemonics, Sol Brickell, double hugged Agatha and Paul Bunyan 2. So PBI2 is an insoluble product. It's a precipitate. I've put two nitrates over here, just like we had on the reactant side. But notice that we have two iodides, and we only have one iodide there. And there we have the lead 2 iodide precipitate. So if we take the time to balance that, we're going to get that sort of response. If we cancel the spectator ions, we'll get the net ionic equation. You can see here that the sodium ions, 2 Na plus on the reactant side, 2 Na plus on the product side. The sodium is simply a spectator ion. Similarly, 2 nitrate ions on the reactant side, two nitrate ions on the product side. They also are spectator ions. If we cancel those, we're going to get the net ionic equation that looks like that.